Hey folks, I have your home prices and insights for Peel and Durham area for week ending November 10th. Before I get into the numbers, in our, previous, in our previous market report for the City of Toronto, we talked about a, a buyer client that we had where before we went to go see the property, there were actually three bully offers and how many agents and their buyers got discouraged and decided not to go see it anymore and so forth. And we ended up buying it, but even though there were three bully offers before we actually went to go see the property, in this video here, I want to talk a little bit about the strategy that went into it. So it's one thing to stay positive and still go see it and still put in an offer, but th there's so much strategy that went behind it. And first of all, you cannot have strategy unless you know all the facts or as many facts as possible. So before we went to go see the property, we did a CMA, a comparative market analysis to figure out what would this condo actually or most likely sell for and, and so we looked at the most recent sales we looked at the the condos that are in, you know in competition with it for sale we looked at cost per square footage we looked at the condo market for that building you know the city of toronto is one thing but looking at it just for that building and that surrounding which way are prices headed so we looked at all that then we went to go see it and, and we had a pretty good idea of where it would sell at within our, it was well within our client's budget and our clients were prepared to spend more than what we actually thought it would sell for. And then through conversation with the listing agent, it's so important communication channels are opening, open and, and as a buyer's agent, you're asking strategic questions, not, hey, how's it going, how's the weather, but strategic questions where the answers can help you in formulating an offer that is taken favorable by the seller. So I found out this was a rental property. So the owner was an investor, was not living in the unit. It was vacant. And when the previous tenants left, we can see there's new fridge, new stove, new, new stainless steel appliances, beautiful appliances. We could see when we were there, it was freshly painted, new caulking around a bathtub, the sink, like there was just a lot done to this to spruce up the unit. So we knew the investor spent money. We knew being vacant and as an investor, I mean, why would you sell an investment property that you're receiving rent on? It's only one reason. You need the money. You have other plans with that money. What those other plans are, aren't relevant. What's important to know is that we knew, I knew that the person selling it needed the money. So when we looked at formulating our offer, and now we're competing with three bully offers that are already there, I knew that the seller needs the money. And so we looked at the deposit. We put in a higher deposit than is normally customary to show the seller we're serious. We put in a closing date just a few weeks from now. It, it wasn't a long two, three month closing date just a few weeks from now because we know the seller has carrying costs. They've got the monthly maintenance fees, insurance, heat, light, power. There's carrying costs and, and we don't know how quickly the seller needs the money, but we know if it's an investor, an investor, they would always rather have the money in their bank account than someone else's bank account. So we put a really short closing date. All this because we knew certain facts through, through conversation, through investigation, and we put a price that was reasonable. We didn't overpay, and when we submitted our offer, because of all those facts and the way the offer was put together, especially with the higher deposit and a short closing date, we won the bid. We were the last one in and we won. And I know when the, sell, the sold price eventually gets posted on the MLS, there's gonna be a lot of buyers thinking, oh, I would have paid that. I, I would have prepared to spend that on that unit. Well, a lot of them gave up just because there were three bully offers and their agents didn't do the homework in making phone calls and the research. So who you hire matters, strategy matters, and you can't have a good strategy if you don't know all the facts. If you wanna to talk to me anything at all related to real estate, we've made it really simple. Below in the description is a link to my calendar. 
Just book a time on there that's convenient for you. I'll know ahead of time when you want to chat and I'll make sure I have the time to give to you, to talk to you about whatever's on your mind related to real estate. Let's get into the numbers. Earlier this week, we did a special show on bidding and blind bidding. You should check it out. The link should be here on the screen somewhere and we really dive deep into pros and cons of blind bidding and, and, and really if we didn't have blind bidding, what would it mean? Let's get into the numbers for Peel and Durham for week ending November the 10th. Here's a quick snapshot of average sold prices. We've got Mississauga, average sold prices come down. We've got Brampton here in orange, average sold prices come down. And look at this, Durham region, average sold price has come down. Prices though coming down, it's a little bit deceiving. Let me, let's take a closer look. So here's Mississauga. We sold only 40 detached properties in all of Mississauga for week ending November 10th. Not gonna lie, 40 is kinda low. And when you look back, there's, really you know only one other week i can see here in the previous nine or ten months where we sold less than 40. so 40 is quite low average sold price has come down quite a bit to 1,494,000 so just under 1.5 and and here's the part when i say this is deceiving well the previous couple of weeks where average sold price was sitting at a record around 1.7 million we also sold in each of those weeks 12 properties at $2 million or more, which brings up average sold price. Well, the current week we went from 12 at $2 million or more down to three. So it kind of skews the numbers a bit, just like the 12 are skewed up, the three properties at $2 million or more skew the numbers down. So, but 1.5 almost is still about average for the year in Mississauga and Average means prices have been higher than they've been the previous years. That's sitting at now, so the 1.5 is sitting at 9% higher than last year's average sold price. And Mississauga is used to recording numbers where it's 20, 25, 30, 42% higher than last year's average sold price. So nine, it's quite low, but I, let's take a look what happens over the next few weeks. Of the 40 that did sell, 78% are at list price or more, so extremely competitive even though there was only 40. Listings are similar to the previous week. We listed 74. Listings are coming down week after week. It's kind of what we expect. We expect sales to come down. We expect listings to come down over the winter, winter months. We wish they wouldn't, but that's what typically happens every year. Months of inventory is sitting at 0.9, but average days on market dropped down to seven. Taking a closer look at Brampton, so average sold price did come down from a record of 1,429. It's now sitting at 1,396. So if I just say, hey, average sold price came down, believe me, it's no relief because 1,396 is the second highest price we've ever had in Brampton. So it's still quite high. Sales did go up. We sold 95 detached properties last week. Seven of those were at $2 million or more. And this almost 1.4 average sold price is 42% higher than what it was this time last year in Brampton. Last year, we didn't sell any properties at $2 million or more. This year for the same week, we sold seven. Of the 95 that did sell, 92% sold at list price or more. We don't often see a, a percentage that high, 92%. That's all of them. Like there's just not a lot of room to negotiate there and, and take your time buying. 104 were listed, months of inventory. I, I didn't know you can be this slow, but months of inventory sitting at 0 0.2. Average days on market in Brampton is seven, which is really hard to believe because if most properties are selling at list price or more, the, the, the go-to strategy right now in a highly competitive seller's market is to list today and 
hold offers in seven days or in five days or in 10 days, but sometime in the future allow people to see the home and then compete in a bidding war. To have seven days as the average days on market means a lot of these offers are being accepted through a bully offer strategy. If you're looking for a detached home in Brampton, you want to keep an eye on this one. It's located in the family-friendly neighborhood of Northwood Park. It's four bedrooms and over 2,100 square feet above grade. The lot is an impressive 40 feet wide and 131 feet deep. That's why you have a massive backyard with plenty of room to play in. I can't show you photos of the inside just yet because the home is getting ready to go on the market, but I can tell you the sellers prefer a long closing, so there could be an opportunity here for you if you need extra time. Call me for details. Let's take a look at Ajax, Pickering, and Whitby. That's what I'm using for the Durham area. Sales went up a little bit. We sold 67 detached homes. Average sold price has been coming down for a couple of weeks in a row now. The average sold price last week was 1,196,000. So yeah, average sold price has been coming down for a couple of weeks. If you're not actually looking at the chart and just hearing these numbers, you're thinking, oh, price relief. Not really. This is almost 1.2 million and 1.2 million is higher than the yearly average, like way higher than what we've been at the first part of the year. So prices are still really high in, in the Durham area, sitting at 26% higher than last year's average sold price. Of the 67 that sold, 88% sold at list price or more, so extremely competitive. We listed 71 detached properties and months of inventory is sitting at 0.3 with eight being the average days on market. So Brampton, Durham area, extremely competitive. Mississauga normally has been, been a little bit wonky for this one week. We'll see what happens. I imagine it's gonna bounce back real quick. This is a, an off week, but overall, extreme seller's market. Don't let the lower prices kind of be deceiving or the lower average sold price for this week be deceiving that thing and the bottom's falling out. We expect prices to kind of stay where they are, if not get a little bit higher. My name is Santos Sessa with 3Max Premier. Thanks for watching. And if you like this content, please subscribe so you're reminded when our new videos come up. Have a great day.